today. It is beautiful out, which I think is a great segue because I do want to respect everybody's time. <laughs> so let's get the program going. We will be recording tonight's program. Um, so it will be available with slideshows as well. We're really excited to see everyone here. So welcome everybody. My name is Michelle Clema. I am the director, director of marketing with Roost. On the call tonight, we also have a variety of other members from the Roost team. And I thank them for all their work um, putting this program together and the work ahead of us as we prepare for the 2024 solar eclipse. And with much further ado, I'd like to just kind of give you a high level of what we'll be covering tonight. Um, we're going to start with a really an overview of what the total solar eclipse is, what's going to happen here in the Adirondacks. We have Seth McGowan from the Adirondack Sky Center Observatory that will kick that off. Following that um, overview, we're going to go over some potential impacts on what that will have on the Adirondacks, um, the planning efforts that are underway to prepare for the event on April 8, 2024, the marketing that will be going on behind that, and then we'll follow up on really how everyone can get involved, because if we work together, um, this really can be a unique ex shared experience for everyone in the Adirondacks, um, and we want it, it really to benefit everyone. So that will be tonight's program. So I am going to end my screen share, and people are going to continue to pop in, and I'm going to hand it over to Seth McGowan from the Adirondack Sky Center and Observatory in Tupper Lake. Great. Thanks, Michelle. Well, um, I don't know how many folks have been to uh, a, a total solar eclipse in the past, um, but those of us that follow eclipses uh, actually chase them down from uh, wherever we are. Uh, we try to get to as many as we can. So uh, before I describe the 2017 uh, experience and how it relates to Tupper Lake, um, let's just go through a little bit of, of the mechanics. Uh, the, the sun, you know, is, is there. And uh, the moon is much closer to the Earth than the sun is, um, but its distance is uh, proportional to its diameter across the sun. So this, the moon appears to be the same size in the sky uh, as it being only uh, 238,000 miles away. It appears to be the same size in the sky as the sun does, which is 93 million miles away. And um, what that causes from time to time is the, the moon passing in front uh, in between the earth and the, and the sun, and it blocks a portion of, uh, of the sun's rays. Right in the, the middle of that is called the umbra, and that's the dark shadow. And then we have towards the edges, uh, the penumbra, which is uh, usually uh, not as uh, not as dark. That middle section is 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 like nighttime. It just gets that dark. So on the right side of the screen, and I'm not sure my mouse is visible to you or not, but uh, there are also partial eclipses, and what we're talking about is a total solar eclipse. And the the reason that that's important is because we had a partial eclipse in the Adirondacks in 2017, and it brought a ton of people here. A total solar eclipse is going to bring uh, that many more people, as it did in 2017, to other areas of the country where there was the total solar eclipse. Um, I should also mention that there's a different type of eclipse uh, called an annular eclipse, which is where the sun is a little bit closer to us than the 93 million miles, and the, the moon is a little bit further away from us uh, than 238,000 miles. So the ratio is a little bit different, and the moon does not fully cover the disk of the sun. Those are very interesting and very cool, but nowhere near as striking and um, as intense as a total solar eclipse. Um, and just for uh, the spirit of full disclosure, uh, we also have lunar eclipses that happen all the time. And that's when the earth gets in, in the way of the sun if you were sitting on the moon. But in any event, here's a just a, a, a graphic that shows that there are some times uh, that the sun, that the earth's orbit around the sun is not a, an exact circle. It's more like a, an ellipse. So there are times when it's closer, and that's what causes the annular versus the, the total solar eclipse. And of course, there's the moon. 
Um, and th these are sort of the phases that it goes through. This this image I took in uh, um, Hopkinville, Kentucky, which was right in the path of totality. And I captured the series of uh, the eclipse moments. And this is what it looked like in 2017 when it crossed the path, uh, when it uh, the shadow uh, crossed the United States. And you can see in this case, it came from the uh, Northwest and went out over the ocean, you know, through Georgia and South Carolina. So I was in Kentucky, and if you know where Kentucky is, I was right, uh, right there, which is dead center in the heart of the uh, the total solar eclipse. And when you're in the in the dead center of that path, you have a very long totality uh, uh, to be there. So anyway, that's what it looked like from the International Space Station. Our path of the uh in in 2024 will move like this it, it just simply has a different shape to it this one coming through mexico and will leave up through canada but uh, we are now instead of at the edge of that uh, path of totality we are directly in the center and that's why in 2017 we only had a partial eclipse in 2024 we are dead center and uh, that's what it looks like as we um, as it passes over us. That middle line, the closer you are to that middle line, the longer the totality lasts. And you can see as the um, shadow goes from uh, southwest to northeast, it starts to elongate into this oval shape. So if you're in the center, of course, that oval is much longer. And if you're on the edges, that uh, that path, that totality is much shorter. That's why the center, people seek out the center of totality. So just for some historic um, reasons, uh, I, I thought I would point out that we have never had a total solar eclipse in this area before. We, uh, you know, I've gone back uh, and, and looked you know, a thousand years, um, and and uh, we can, we can predict that it's all just geometry, and we know the way the sun moves, and we know the way the Earth moves. But in, in a thousand or more years, maybe two thousand, three thousand years, um, it's not happened in uh, in this area before. We have had, as you can see, a number of partial eclipses where the sun is partially blocked. Most recently in 2017, that was the number five there. Uh, and it was 62% coverage of the disk of the sun. Not a whole heck of a lot. In, in, uh, on April 8th, we're going to have coverage that lasts for 3 minutes and 33 seconds. It will be dark for 3 minutes and 33 seconds uh, right along that line of totality. And then we'll have another annular eclipse. We had one in 1994, and some of you may remember that. Um, but you probably don't remember the traffic in uh, in the area because it's not as big a deal as a total eclipse is. We'll have another annular eclipse in 2093, but not another total eclipse for you know another couple of centuries. Mm -hmm. From a, a time perspective, and again, from my perspective in Tupper Lake, which is where we're located, mm -hmm. um, this is a fairly long event. The partial begins, the moon starts to partially eclipse the sun at about 212. And by 226, um, it's at its maximum point. And it lasts for three minutes and 33 seconds. And then it moves off the disk of the sun um, and it ends at 436. So we're talking a couple of hours here. This is not a um, you know a five minute deal. It, it will last. And for that three minutes and 33 seconds right in the middle, um, it will be as if it's nighttime. And if it's clear out, you'll actually be able to see stars and planet. There's There will be planets up uh, vis visible also. So having said all that, let me, let me just sort of describe what my experience was in 2017, because I did travel out of the area to, uh, to view this event. Um, I was in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, dropping my daughter off at University of Kentucky. And my wife and I drove for this event uh, to Hopkinville, which is three hours away. We uh, we got there and we discovered we knew that there was a lot of crowds, but there was a lot of people there, mm -hmm. um, more than more than we realized. And, and um, 
And so we parked in a Walmart parking lot and we got literally the last spot in the Walmart parking lot before we were, you know, parking on, uh, on somebody on top of somebody else. Um, and we stayed there all day. It was great because Walmart, they had bathrooms, they had, you know, all the supplies that we could possibly uh, ever want. So it was a great experience, but that's not where I intended to go. I had my, my plot all picked out. When while we were there um, and driving in, uh, we noticed that every lawn had a sign on it that said, "You know, rent our driveway, camp out on our lawn for twenty five dollars for the day, or something like that." And you can see um, this is actually leaving the eclipse, and and I guess the the biggest lesson that uh, that America learned, and this was referred to as the Great American Eclipse in twenty seventeen. Um, was that uh, preparedness is uh, it can't be understated. We got there. We got from Lexington to um, Hopkinville, which is a town not unlike many of ours, a little bit bigger than Tupper Lake, maybe about the size of Malone. I would say uh, if I had to compare it to uh, to one. Um, we got there in three hours, and what happens is people trickle in over the the few hours prior to it, even the days before. Uh, prior to it, but you can see that in uh, in the picture. Let me see if I can get back to it. Um, there were vendors set up. It, it was kind of a nice, you know, sort of an experience, and people trickled in. But then the minute the eclipse was over, every engine within ten miles started. Every every key went into the, and the engines all started, and. Um, and everybody left at the same time. And that was the the biggest lesson I think that America learned was that um, the, it, it's just, it hasn't been uh, that, that kind of an experience. Yeah. It was three hours getting there. It was 11 hours getting back, I guess is what I should say um, from uh, Hopkinville to Lexington. And every gas station was out of gas every um you know every restaurant mcdonald's they ran out of food it was it was unbelievable it was like an apocalypse honestly but when we were there uh when my wife and i were there it was almost like a religious experience um it was so fascinating and beautiful and um walmart let every the employees out they closed for the uh for the little while that it was in totality and you know when it started there was a big cheer and a flurry of excitement uh, and then when it ended, there was like a round of applause, like somebody, you know, made it happen. And, uh, you know, we got to know everybody that was within 20 feet of us. It was just that kind of an experience. And then we left. And that 11 hours was probably the worst 11 hours of my life. Uh, my wife and I almost got divorced during that uh, 11 hours, uh, just because it was so tedious. We were hungry. Uh, we, we, you know... So anyway, that was that was kind of our experience. Mm -hmm. um, despite all of the science and so forth, uh, people come to these things. I go to these things because it's it's spiritual, really. Uh, there's nothing like it, and uh, we've never seen anything like it here in this area. Um, and I tell students at the schools that we're never going to see this again. Your you know your grandparents never saw this. Your grandkids will never see anything like this again. So. Uh, cherish the moment, but um, bring supplies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, thank you, Seth, very much. Yeah, yeah my pleasure. All right. I will uh, stop my sharing. Awesome. That was great. And I think that there's nothing better than having someone that's such an expertise in the field be able to really describe what's going to happen here in the Adirondacks. And it most definitely is a very unique, very unique event. So to look a little, little deeper as to like where in the Adirondacks this will impact and that path to totality that Seth was just speaking to really does cut th directly through the Adirondacks. That center line is that totality path. Everyone, and that's the very center of totality where it will be the longest duration um, for the eclipse. It, you know, in the chart to the side, it shows kind of total duration for, for totality. That's when the, the moon is completely covering the sun. Um, everywhere within that shaded line technically is in that path through totality um, as we go forward. So, you know, 
one thing to take into consideration, you'll see some of the numbers here that I, I have referenced are a little bit different than Seth's is a good point is with, even within one community, your exact ge geographic location will impact how long you'll you'll have be in that complete darkness phase. So what does that mean for, for the Adirondacks? This truly is a unique opportunity. Um, it is an opportunity to create those lifetime memories, not just for travelers, where a lot of it's like who's coming to the Adirondacks, but those residents that live here. Um, it's really a once in a lifetime experience to share with your families, um, share with visitors. So this is a unique opportunity to really boost visitation in what is historically our quietest point in the year. And also to showcase the region, you know, really show off the beauty that we have, the unique attractions, and make people want to come back. But really, how the big question is, how many people will travel to the Adirondacks? I think that's what everyone's wondering. Seth is showing some magical things about what happened out west. Um, and Steve Vance had a great um, comment in the chat about the experience in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where he said in 2017, um, the roads had similar access to Lake Placid with no highways and traffic jams were hours and hours. Um, so that is very, very similar. Um, however, you know, there's a lot of factors to take in consideration um, with a, with this total solar eclipse. And, you know, like they learned in 2017, um, and the white papers show that there really is no, really, it's impossible to predict the exact number of people that are coming from eclipse, for the eclipse. But pre preparation is critical. And really, all of us coming together and sharing information as we get closer and closer, you know, how many the inquiries that we're having, bookings, those type, that type of information will really be able to help us pinpoint and you know how our best expectations together. So what things can we follow? You know, we might not know that exact number, but we do have some expectations of what it will be like. Um, we, again, this is unique in that um, it is a shared um, experience for both residents and visitors. You know, often we have in the Adirondacks hosted very large scale events. Um, with some of those events, um, it may be residents that are more focused on going to those events or visitors. You know, we have some, some events where it's all one particular um, audience that does participate in a race or something along those lines. It does bring a lot of athletes together, for example. But this is a very unique experience because it's really truly shared by residents that live here and want to go out and experience this in their community, this once in a lifetime opportunity, as the, well as those really, and you know, we anticipate one of our biggest markets will be that half day's drive um, that will be coming up to visit or and not just technically up, but coming in, I should say, to visit the solar eclipse. Um, that's really one of the largest segments. We do anticipate also overnight visitation, and we encourage, you know, a lot of the messaging we're going to have is that come early and, you know, stay a little bit longer, um, you know, avoid that traffic um, pattern getting in and out. Um, and that's where a lot of the further on discussions were about how everyone can get involved will be really important. Um, so that's that pre and post activities would increase that length of stay. Um, we do anticipate that during that moment of totality, a lar the largest concentration of traffic will be around that center line, that path to totality, um, where they have the longest stay. With that said, you know, their overnight visitation, their other activities will be, you know, anywhere in that path to totality or on both sides will really be impacted um, by the eclipse. But, and I will say this, and I will sound like a broken record as I go through the presentation, sharing information will be key as we go forward. You know, if you're seeing trends, if you're having inquiries on certain things, um, your events, are, you know, your website traffic, those things, if we're all sharing what we're seeing, we can be most prepared as we lead into um, the eclipse. There are some very unique considerations to take into effect when it comes to the eclipse and the eclipse in April, April 8th, to be fact. You know, if we could schedule things, you know, it, it is beautiful. We couldn't ask for a more quiet time of year to have an event pop up, but there, that doesn't come without some challenges with, with regard to spring weather. Um, we'll wanna look at conditions like this map that we pulled off of um, 
it's been on a few national publications that shows um, really the they analyze the um, statistics in in weather in the cloud coverage from the 1970s to 2002 for that 30 year span. And what they saw was um, that you know we do fall in that higher percentage for cloudiness you know for the solar eclipse. You know, this will impact those that are really going to chase and are really thinking a year and a half in advance, maybe looking for that southern, you know, southern warmer climates for the eclipse. But it's not something that I think we need to be, you know, there will still be people traveling, just one of those considerations that we'll want to take in, to look at. Conditions are even more critical. You know, I've already been on calls on a much larger um, statewide scale where they're talking about, you know, what better place to watch an eclipse than the top of uh, Adirondack High Peak or, you know, that lower elevation fields that might be open. April 8th can be very unpredictable in the Adirondacks. And we also know that's typically when, you know, they're recommending to stay under the 2,500 feet. Um, winter conditions are still up above there. So all considerations, um, you know, really be it's about safety with water temperatures you know depending on whether or not sometimes we have ice sometimes it's wide open water and it can be a beautiful day and people will be like what better way than get, grab some kayaks and head out onto the water really all that safety mechanisms will be a much of the messaging as we go forward um, with preparation for the eclipse you know just for fun here is a screenshot from a dec press release that was issued on april 6th of this year which was issuing that muddy trail advisory and um, above the 2,500 feet regulations for snow and ice. The other big consideration is the timing with regard to the school calendars and spring break. You know, Easter the next year will fall on March 31st. Um, most of the schools that have like that two week um, vacation will run that first week of April and also that second week of April. You know, looking around, we we did look at some of the other, you know, area school district calendars that have been released. Um, ones that are doing a one week are doing the first week of April and extending through um, April 8th, and we'll have that Monday off. Um, not saying that's across the board what the schedules are, but that's the general trend of what we've looked at and we've seen. Um, and so we all know that that does impact. Sometimes businesses do close down and travel with their families during that time of year. That's also a time that could be a little bit more challenging for workforce. And our seasonal businesses, those that are only open during the warmer seasons are not typically ready and open yet for the season. And there's some other considerations that we're really focused on as we get closer, and it's really mitigating the pressure points. And we talk about thinking of, you know, adding an 11 hour traffic jam to the Adirondacks. What can we do to mitigate that, the safety impacts that that has? Um, you know, how do we direct people from places that maybe not be safe, like from, the, from a lake to a mountaintop um, to more, you know, open fields, drier locations? Um, those viewing parties and events will be key. So that having that information to share with the public um, regularly is going to be one of those strategies that we'll look for for success. Um, we'll talk about, you know, stories like Seth's um, where he, he and his wife almost got divorced because they were hungry. You know, those, those services along um, the route, making sure, you know, really communicating because we don't want to encourage businesses really to over order product to support this event and be stuck in a time of year where they you know have more product than they can um, effectively get you know sell or use um, but at the same time we don't want to be in this apocalyptic world where you know we're you know there's locations out of toilet paper and everyone's kind of fending for themselves so as we move towards this eclipse we're really going to want to you know, continue to have more and more of like sharing, you know, what trends we're seeing so we can all prepare our region best together. And throughout this, we'll be doing some business support and um, really helping to communicate. Um, you know, communication will be key again for success on this. So that's why we have formed what's called the, the Adirond Eclipse ADK Task Force. And so we've put together a task force of tourism representatives, that could be your chamber of commerce or um, 
town employees from throughout the region. We have um, New York State um, representatives from um, New York State Police, DEC, health officials, um, experts in a variety of different fields from as well as you know, making sure there was hoteliers on and retail and restaurant services. We put this task force together with really a common goal of working together to provide a safe and, and, and memorable viewing experience for um, everyone in the Adirondacks, both residents and visitors, and while really working to mitigate those pressure points that we just had addressed. But we don't need to really reinvent the wheel. There's also a interagency um, task force that's really focusing on that public safety piece that we're talking about, as well as that marketing and tourism piece. So that, that is happening at the state level. I know there's um, some individuals from the Adirondacks, including ORTA, New York State DEC, New York State Police, that also are working at that state level. And as that information and plan comes down, um, the, the Eclipse Task Force will really work to how does that mold and best fit and meet our needs. And then we're going to share that with the communities, the attractions, um, and organizations. And then, you know, even at that level, there's some even more micro task force that, that are happening. And I know of a few communities already that are starting to work on that. Like, how are we handling um, the planning of events and, and moving people around in those individual communities? So there's a lot of layers of planning to mitigate um, some of those challenges and really turning them into a great opportunity for the Adirondacks. Some of the other things that we are doing is really at creating that clearinghouse for where people can go to find the most recent information on what's happening during the solar eclipse and start planning. So we've created an, and launched a new website that's called 2024-Eclipse is the URL. It's a very um, clean and, and concise website at this moment. We'll continue to add information as it comes in. It really talks to you know where to watch um, you know, safety information, it was helping people find those best locations. There's a section that directs people to business resources um, that we'll get to in a little bit longer. And then very soon, I, we anticipate what the biggest piece will be are those events and happenings where we can start sharing um, as we have more information from around the region on those viewing parties and activities that people will be traveling for, really adding those to this website. So this will be that kind of one-stop shop that you know helps introduce people to where to watch the eclipse in the Adirondacks and then redirects them to you know more granular information. As we have more and more information, we'll start um, doing much more marketing. This summer, we're gonna have a lot of materials in market to capture the audience while they're here. As those numbers tick up for the summer, we're gonna make sure to really capture them while they're here with you know posters and signage and, and rat cards that really feature those leave no tra trace principles that we consider will be key. And um, you know having that those materials available so people can really see them while they're here. Um, We'll also then, um, once we get more of that event information and information for partners on packages and, and ways um, for travelers to participate, we will then start a lot more outbound marketing. Um, we're already taking advantage of some of the state and national efforts and making sure that our stuff aligns and is linking when they're looking for, for example, on I Love New York and um, get to the Adirondacks, they're finding our information. So we're sharing that there. And then um, we will be able to also then begin to more digital and traditional advertising. We'll also have a strong um, PR efforts, the press releases, working with travel writers, um, disseminating information through th third parties that way, as well as using social media. And I'm seeing the chat blow up a little bit on the, the I'm sure you're seeing that some requests for the logos and the, and the as well. Um, though that will is available to everyone. Um, we'll be talking about that in the business toolkit that's available. So that URL is will be coming up very soon. I'm getting closer. One thing that we're also do, working on right now is we've created a branded Adirondacks um, Eclipse glasses. So these are the solar viewing glasses that if you are hosting an event or you would like to have them available, if, say you're a lodging property and you want to have them available for your guests. Um, these will be available for 
um, bulk purchase. Um, we have actually partnered up with the Adirondack Sky Center, who will be doing a bulk order. And Seth, correct me if I'm wrong, you're doing like 50,000 at a time in, with these glasses right now? Yes, yes, at least yes. 50,000. Yes. Yeah. So um, starting early next week, we're, we're guaranteeing Monday potentially sooner, but I'd rather under promise over deliver. Links will be available so businesses can start ordering these Adirondacks Eclipse glasses and have them available. One, one thing that's nice about this partnership is not only do they get to have that, that you know souvenir feel and branding to them, it's also an opportunity to make sure that they are you know, certified glasses, not all glasses are the same. So safety is the utmost importance when it comes to um, viewing the eclipse. So that will be available. Everyone that's on this call um, will be getting a follow-up email that will have that ordering information. It's also available on that toolkit where the, the logos are as well on our, our Roos website. And our final slide, it'll have uh, that link for you. So we're, we're definitely excited about those. And this is really, you know, part of the discussion we want to get to get into is really how can everyone get involved? And, you know, based on the time of year and some of the considerations, um, what we've learned from 2017, you know, those events and viewing parties and those, you know, creating those unique shared experiences are what um, people, both residents and travelers are looking for. Um, so we're, you know, looking to encourage people to, you know, create those opportunities um, and then share that information with us. Um, on our website, we are already starting to put together tools and tips um, for businesses on, you know, what are some best practices when you're creating events. Sometimes there's unique things that you might not think of. You know, one that the white papers talk about, um, you know, that you don't even think about is it will become nighttime. So if your property has automatic lights, um, whether it's in parking lots or on your buildings, that's something um, to really make it a true experience. You'll want to like shut off those automatic lights so people can really see that true darkness and potentially see those stars um, and, and planets that Seth was speaking of because it's going to be a beautiful, clear day. I'm just going to keep being positive there. <laughs> um, you know, other businesses may want to do unique themed offerings or packages, you know, creating um, it, it may be your restaurant and you want to do, you know, space themed meals or, you know, specials and, you know, thinking creative and outside the box. What is it that makes your business stand apart? Um, you know, looking at times of year, there may be a lot of places where restaurants, I know we're talking to a smaller community um, during one of our task force meetings where, you know, that time of year, there's a limited number of restaurants and, you know, the concern about a big influx of people and trying to create that plan was, you know, how do they create packages and businesses work together so they can alleviate some of that stress point of, you know, people traveling or trying to find trying to find meals and those not being available. So creating some pre-booking opportunities for people so they could get a good idea on, on headcount. Um, so that is one piece. And um, then once you start working on those things is sharing your plans with us. Um, on our, we'll have that information. We'll encourage you to either contact your Roost representative, and there's or there's a form right on our website that you can fill out, and we'll reach out to you. But the sooner we can have, even if you have just that bare bones, you know, not your high level, this is exactly what we're doing. But yes, we're going to do something, getting that teaser out. The more information we can have on the front end, and then keep building on it. Um, those are the inquiries and what people are looking for. You know, there are people that have been booking and looking at these dates since probably, you know, the morning after the eclipse in 2017. Um, so we want to make sure that we start getting our information out there um, so people can also plan. Um, so don't be afraid. You know, too early is never, never a, a problem here on this one. And then that last piece, too, is, you know, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but if you're seeing a unique trend, you know, all of a sudden you're, you're totally booked out at your lodging property or, you know, your website's analytics for the information is really going up really high, or, you know, you're getting a lot of calls with a particular question or concern. Don't be afraid to reach out. The more we share those trends, um, questions, et cetera, the better it can help for us all to plan and prepare on this together. So those are some of the real ways that, you know, we're really encouraging everyone. Let's lean in, let's work together, um, share information. Over communication will not be an issue here. No such thing. 
So that leads us to the business toolkit that we've been alluding to. And so right now we have a, a very bare bone um, resource toolkit that's going to continue to grow and have a lot, lot more resources for businesses. This is the QR code you can scan on your phone if you want to look at it real quick. If not, it's roostadk.com forward slash eclipse 2024. And this will be where businesses can go um, to find the, those, uh, the Eclipse ADK logo that was mentioned before that you've seen throughout this presentation. Those are available for you to use. Um, there's a variety of different formats that it is available there. There's also some web graph, some very basic web graphics and digital banners that includes the dates. More and more of those will continue to pop up regularly to keep that fresh. That's where the information will be posted next week on how to order those Adirondack branded glasses. Um, those will be coming soon. Um, the FAQ section is a big one. You know, that's where we're continuing to answer those questions that businesses may have, you know, helping point people to the right location to submit their events so it could be populated on our calendars and sent to I Love New York and other calendars. Um, you know, those submission forms are there. There's other, that's where if you're having a package or cool special, go there. There's a, there's a section for you to submit that information to us. And that's going to continue to be updated regularly. We'll be sending emails out about that, doing some, you know, follow us on social media. That's where um, we will continue to keep posting that information. Um, come fall, we'll probably have another um, one of these calls as more and more resources come out. But that's really going to, has been created to be, you know, keep providing resources. If we're here seeing demands for things, we'll put them there. Um, and we'll have some fun fact sheets for you to share with your guests over the summer. Etc. So that's the end of needing to listen to me ramble about some of the preparations that we have in place for um, the eclipse. And this is you know, an opportunity to go through the chat and see, I know some questions have come up that I've not been able to address yet and you know, start the discussion if there are any other questions as well. There's a, there's a couple, Michelle. Um... Uh, Seth answered the question about how much will the glasses cost. Um, that'll be uh, finalized uh, tomorrow. Um, and uh, as Michelle mentioned, everybody will get a follow-up email with that information. And of course, that information will show up on the Eclipse page as soon as it's available. But that we'll have that number shortly. Thanks, mm -hmm. Seth, for getting all that in place. Um, and then the other question here was, uh, there's a couple questions about the specifics around angle and inclination and all that good scientific stuff. Um, there is an interactive map tool located in the FAQ um, section of that page that says, is my community in the path of totality? You can click the little interactive map link. You can select your exact position, and then uh, you can click that, that uh, details link, and it'll give you the full details with a little time lapse and everything of the sun. It's, it's very detailed. It gives you all the degrees of inclination and all that good stuff. Awesome. I'd also like to offer anybody who needs any help or questions uh, about any of that sciencey stuff i'd be happy to help with anybody uh on the call at, at a later date of course uh the presentation will get sent out as a video so you can watch that to your heart's content anytime you want we'll send it out, that out just a little bit after this meeting mm -hmm. um logo and other branded items um we uh, so the the toolkit just to make clear on the toolkit and the logo that's free for use. Obviously, anyone who would like to make use of that to make merchandise or use it in any of your marketing materials or other or other things, um, feel free. Um, so, from that perspective, at this point, Michelle, uh, I don't know if you want to comment on. We don't have any intention of other than the glasses at this point. It's still a little early on and on yeah, specific. There's some, there's some basic things we plan. You know, for the summer, we plan on there will be some posters in market. We're trying to make them in informational, but also feel like something that somebody would want to also keep and save. There'll be kind of a stylized map with, with the branding on it, the dates that's, um, though those will be up in market. We'll be doing like those disposable coasters that'll go out in restaurants um, as well, restaurants and pubs where um, really capture an audience where they can scan and learn more while they're here. Um, when it comes closer to the actual eclipse, we'll do probably a more specific stylized like that 
post us a little less informational, more branded Adirondacks. That's a collector's item that people could take with them and some stickers. But from actual like selling merchandise, that's not typically a market that we get into. We give away more promotional items. Um, so that is an opportunity for businesses to look at, you know, when, I, when we talk about opportunities to enhance that experience and and create those activities, that would be another opportunity. Matt asked, uh, I'm sorry, Matt, uh, you asked if the when did the totality happen in Ticonderoga? You are just on the edge. I'm sorry, <laughs> Ticonderoga will not be in the path of totality. You'll have to drive a little bit north uh, to be in the path. Uh, Crown Point actually is just barely in the path and we'll have I don't know the exact time, but a few seconds, you know, tens of seconds probably of totality on the very edge there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the other thing, and I'm not sure if I reiterated this enough, I feel like I talk about it often, is, you know, when you're thinking about activities and events, for all of us, you know, monopolizing that, you know, three minutes and 33 seconds in the middle of totality, you know, think about things that could happen, you know, the weekend leading up to the eclipse and, you know, also really thinking about, you know, if you are planning events, what activities could keep people so that you don't have the entire Adirondack starting their engine at exactly the same moment, you know, is it whether it's, you know, a, a followed by some food, you know, thing or music or some sort of other activity that keeps people just a little bit longer that creates more of a trickle out effect as opposed to the, you know running the faucet full stream out there's some other just really good ideas in the chat about you know having a booth set up for winter carnival to promote it um, um and uh also um you know making sure it's promoted at some some other some other events. Um, these are all great ideas, um, and definitely as you come up with those, share them. We're happy to provide support and materials if at all possible. If you're if you're going to be uh, promoting at, at your own event or or other or other thing, we'll also be creating some materials for some of like the larger travel shows we go to. We typically typically go down, for example, in January for the. Um, I always want to call it the New York Times travel show, but they've rebranded it. I think it's the Adventure and Travel Show for one as one example. That's down at the Javits Center in New York City. Um, we'll probably we'll be creating some pop-ups and materials for those events. So if someone is having a large event, we may be able to kind of move those um, materials around um, next winter as well. Um, so that might be an opportunity. So those are all great ideas that we encourage everyone to keep sharing that information. Um, you know, reach out to your roost represent your regional roost representative if you're unsure that there's uh, that toolkit will point you in the right direction of how to get a hold of us. We also have an email address that's called Eclipse at roostadk.com. That's kind of like a general info that we can connect you with the right point person. Uh, Michelle, somebody asked about cloud cover, and uh, if I could just address that for just a quick yeah. second, um, it it entirely depends on the type of clouds that that they are um, but the the fact is that the sun will be blocked and it will get uh you know significantly dark uh, but even more cool in that case depending on the clouds is you can see the shadow of the moon move across the sky kind of coming at you from the horizon like uh, like a scene from a sci-fi movie that's a very thrilling uh, kind of experience. So you may be disappointed not to see the sun be eclipsed itself, but there are very interesting phenomena that happen uh, mm -hmm. when there's cloud cover. Yeah, you know, I think some of these ideas like the street fairs and the fireworks, you know, this is an opportunity to be creative. Absolutely. Um, there's some questions about joining the task force and or the list for the task force, um, which is not currently posted, uh, but we can we can post that that list on the website. That's not a big deal at all. Yep. Uh, we'll do that right after this call. Um, in terms of joining the task force, Bobby, if you just want to, uh, you could drop Michelle an email. Um, yep. Go to eclipse at roostadk.com. I'll drop yep. that in chat. Questions, anything else? Looking at the map that 
is on the website, there's like a blue line in the center and then sort of a band with the red on the edges. <laughs> Can someone articulate more what those represent? Seth, you want to take that one about the, the distance from the center? Oh, you're muted, Seth. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the center of the uh, of the in between the lines, and I think I'm I'm thinking mm -hmm. of the right uh, image that you're referring to, um, is the 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 the, to the edges of where the shadow is. Um, yep, yeah, there you go. So if you're on that center line, that that whole band of gray, um, and sometimes you do see it pictured with blue on the edges. Mm -hmm. Um, that whole area is actually shadow. You, you have a time of totality in there. Um, if, if you look at that uh, map, for example, to Utica, uh, for example, they're outside of that edge. So all Utica would ever get would be a partial eclipse. It'll never be, they'll never have total darkness. Mm -hmm. And the closer to that center line you are because of the uh, oval shape of the shadow on the earth, the closer to the center that of that line you are, the longer you to, your totality will last. So as you get towards the edges of that, towards those blue lines that I think you were seeing, um, you'll have totality, but it's better to be towards the center for the longer totality. Um, and when you get to that blue line, you'll have a few seconds of totality maybe, but not a whole heck of a lot. Once you cross over that blue line, you'll only get a partial eclipse. I hope that, does that help? Yeah. When you're talking about, so the map that I'm looking at has a blue line in the center of the gray path, the one on eclipse2024.org. Yeah, and for that, that's the equivalent of the dark gray line. Oh yeah, you can just pull it up, Michelle, that'd be. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. That's essentially the equivalent, yep. That's the equivalent of the dark gray line. Um, and that would have, uh, like Seth was saying, that would be the most at about three minutes and change maximum totality time for us. So the, it, like the, to translate this, yep. I'm all the way up in Maine, I kind of zoomed in too quick. This <laughs> is that website that you can pull your exact location, but this is the same thing where ours shows it just as all gray and shadowed with a center line. Um, but we, kind of, we did kind of create it that way. So it was trying to make it a little bit easier to understand with the, the three different lines. Um, this middle one is that center path where, again, the longest and then everyone in between will be in the path. Yeah, I'm just, wow, the Adirondack Regional Airport is right there. Yes, it is. Yeah, Saranac Lake uh, in particular, Jordan, will have a, a significant amount of totality. So being pretty close to the line, yeah. Oh, it's a good point. On uh, Steve mentioned uh, ski packages. Um, uh, since technically it will, it will good chance it will still be ski season. Uh, they were open, you know, this year at that time. Um, so great point, Steve. Uh, and there is someone from Orda on the task force committee uh, represented there, so we can definitely work with them. Yeah, yeah. so that's There's Megan right there. Thanks, Megan. <laughs> and we did, we were in conversation um, with them this week, and everyone Orda is working on that those plans. Um, for what will happen at the different facilities. Um, those details are still working forward. They're also working on that state um, agency as well, the task force. So as those details become available, they'll be sharing those and we'll help disseminate as well. You know, I think there's a lot of kind of quiet planning going on in, in you know, behind the scenes. We'll again, encourage everyone as they start to at least firm up that they're definitely doing something. The more that we can all kind of get the, those that teaser information out early, that'll that'll be great. Any other questions? There was one. What was that URL of the, the eclipse map that we were just showing? That is eclipse. 2024.com. You can also, the, all those resources are available on that Roost resource toolkit. 
Um, what, we're trying to make that really a nice one-stop shop so you don't have to remember 5,000 different URLs. And as we find helpful resources, we'll keep adding those again. I will drop that um, URL in the chat. So um, another one, maybe Seth, you could just talk a little bit about on the gray area on either side of the totality. So not in totality, are we talking 50%, 75% and it's a gradient and maybe it drops off quick after the line or not so quick. <laughs> if, if you're in, if you're in anywhere in the gray or in between those blue lines, um, you'll have a hundred percent. Oh, I think the, the yeah, the question was on the other side of the lines. And so not in totality, what does that look like? Is it just a little bit, a sliver, 50%? The further away you get, the smaller that percentage gets. So if you're 50 miles you know, south of that uh, blue line or 100 miles south of that line, you may get 50% uh, coverage. Uh, in 2017, in this area, it was uh, about, um, uh, I think it was 67% coverage. Uh, at that time, and that was the that was the one that came from the northwest to the southeast. So there was still some coverage. Good question. Any other ones? No. Again, we encourage everyone um, to if you do have a questions you know, things pop up, check out that FAQ section. Uh, if you, that doesn't answer your questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Again, if you have the question, odds are there are many, many others in our region that have that question. So, you know, I think it's always good to see what information people are inquiring on so we can help provide those resources. This will be the first of, I'm sure, many um, kind of updates as we get closer and closer to the eclipse. We really wanted to get one kind of off the ground before everyone got too busy for the summer season. Um, you know, so it would probably be fall again before we really start um, with any further meetings. But in between, there will be resources that come out. I encourage everyone to follow us on, on Facebook. Um, if you're not signed up for our emails, you can do that at Roost ADK in the footer. We will be sending information out um, digitally as we continue. Um, to get closer and closer to the eclipse. So you can stay, stay informed and also know when the next meetings are coming up. And again, I'd like to take a moment to thank Seth McGowan from the Adirondack Sky Center and Observatory. It's always nice to have something that's much more articulate in talking about the science side of everything when it comes to the eclipse. Um, so he'll be a familiar face as we continue to advance in preparation. Glad to help. And I know there were some that were looking for that eclipse task force. We've had our official, um, for who's on that eclipse task force, we had our official first meeting. So we're just finalizing that roster and it will be published in that toolkit as well. Um, just to give you some background context, it represents, it's full of many of like the Chamber of Commerce directors, um, community parks and recreation tourism partners, um, members from Adirondack Health, uh, school districts are represented, um, New York State DEC, State Police, ORTA, many of our large attractions throughout the region. Um, so it's a, a wide range of about 40 representatives um, throughout the Adirondacks that are working together on some of those planning pieces. And if you are eager and interested in helping, um, you know, the more people that we can have to really divide and conquer and, and make a great plan, the better. So to reach out again, eclipse at roostadk.com is an email address. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Great meeting. Thanks. Thank you.